What's up guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on a rustic bookshelf slash storage unit. A little bit different from the modern design as usual. This one is going up for a donation and I didn't want to make this one so taste specific. And with that out of the way, I designed this piece to be broken down and reassembled. Before I take you into shop and bring out the power tools, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Simply Safe, a reliable do-it-yourself home security solution all monitored by professionals 24-7 who will call you in the occasion of an emergency. This system is really simple to use and set up. In fact, most devices come with adhesive, so whether you're a homeowner, renting, installation can be a breeze. I'll fill you in on more details, but for now, let's get to making. Be sure to check the video description for all the materials used in this project. If rustic is not your style, you can simply switch out the materials and have more contrast in colors. I use southern yellow pine for the shelves which I then cut down to size. When using construction lumber, these are never accurate. So I measured and took the size of the smallest shelf, then I ripped them down to the same depth. The two standing structures are made from select pine, which I then marked and cut at the same time. To build the two frames, I'm gonna use wooden dowels. Next, I'm gonna find the center of the smaller pieces and drill a hole there. And with that hole, I can then use a dowel center to mark the adjacent piece. And just in case I'm off center, I'm gonna mark both pieces so I know exactly where they go. Now I can drill a hole in the adjacent piece that I use the dowel center to mark. And if everything was done right, it all should come together perfectly. I repeated that step three more times until I was complete. Once I double checked everything, I can now glue these up. And with the glue all set up, I can now remove the clamps and move on to the next step. So now I'm gonna work on the cross support, which is something I've never done before. And I don't know how others do it, but for me, I'm just gonna lay these pieces down and then place a mark right on top of them. Then I'll head over to the miter saw and cut those angles. I then double checked to see how this fared out and it looked pretty good. So I used this to mark the other piece. I wanted to get the intersecting part as accurate as possible. So I used some scrap pieces of wood and this really helped with the alignment. For the piece at the bottom, I used one of the cutoff ends to hold that piece in place so it's not moving. I marked the line which established the bottom part of the support. Next, I took a clamp to hold the pieces together, then I marked them. I also labeled the pieces top and bottom. This is more of a mental note to help me keep track of everything. As a way to fit these together, I'm gonna to use a half lap joint. I'm gonna mark the halfway point on both of the support. And because I labeled the part, I now know that the top of this one needs to be cut out and the bottom of the other one needs to be cut out. So I'll use a few hand tools to remove this section and then I'll repeat the same thing for the other one. If you carefully take your time, the pieces should come together just fine. Now, since this piece is meant to come apart, I'm gonna use bolts to hold it together and not glue them. If you don't plan to take it apart, you can totally glue this section. Since I removed half of the material, that means I have to modify the threaded insert now so that it works in this setup. Now this part looks pretty good, so let's address the four ends. Now each end of the cross support will have a threaded insert going right into the end grain. Now personally, I think this is good enough to hold the structure together. For there's no load on it, it's just acting as a holding piece. If you have any concern, you can always put wood glue down in the hole before you put the threaded insert in. 
If you don't get the 30 insert in perfectly, you can always sand off the end so that everything fits nicely. I modified a couple of the connecting bolts and I think this looks work for this type of design. Since I missed the other one, here's a closer look on how the threaded insert go into the end grain. I repeated the same process for the remaining joints. So right about this point, I can sand everything down. Now I don't want to go through a ton of sandpaper, nor do I have a lot of time at the moment. So I pulled out the planer to remove a few layers off the rough lumber. Now my goal is not to flatten the board. All I'm doing is just taking off layers, which you can accomplish the same thing by using a belt sander or an orbital sander. There's no escaping the sanding process. I just wanted to minimize the work because there's many places that the planer will not be able to get like the sides. I ended up sanding everything three times which took about 45 minutes. I used 120 grit first, 220, followed up by 320 grits. Eventually I'm going to donate this to charity and since I don't know others taste I wanted to keep it a bit neutral and I went with a light walnut Danish oil. I'm a big fan of Danish oil because it soaks into the wood and the dry time is really fast so you can also add a second coat if you want to but mainly I just leave one coat because that's usually a good enough tone for me. For the frame I went with an espresso which is really dark. I didn't want to go with paint because paint normally add another layer onto the work surface and I didn't want that to have any kind of problem with alignment. And also I didn't want the paint coming off when you need to remove the cross support. The espresso was also quite simple to apply, just brush it on and wipe it off. I let the pieces sat up overnight. It's not 24 hours yet, but everything seems to be dry. First, I'm gonna assemble everything together. Then I'm gonna apply the clear coat. My first intention was to spray the clear coat on here. I even took the can out. And for some reason, I still managed to grab the can of wipe on poly. I mean, that would have been fine. I just think that I didn't give this enough drying time. And I noticed right away because the stain was bleeding onto the rack. Before I let this one go, I'm gonna have to restain a few pieces. But for now, I'm just gonna add that clear coat on here and move on. To attach each shelf, I'm going to use four small brackets. I attach the bottom shelf first and I space that four inches from the bottom. I also made a really quick jig that not only spaces these perfectly apart, but also center the bracket. The brackets also make it really easy to assemble and disassemble. Even though each bracket come with its own screws, I'm going to use longer screws to attach the shelves. Now after all this project came out pretty nice, obviously there's some things that I still need to address at a later point, but for now this one is done. Now a great way to stay organized is having a place for everything and with Simply Safe, the sponsor of today's video, they offer a stylish security system that seamlessly blend into your environment. There's nothing like having a visual with your home or your way. So the camera is one of the things I use the most. I actually use this to see what my daughter is up to and more often than not she wants to watch TV in the living room and I can keep an eye on her that way. Setting this system up is straightforward. It comes with a very simple setup manual that's not black and white. After plugging the system in, it's already in setup mode. You tell the system that you want to add a device, you initiate that device, you then pick a name for that location, the system automatically recognizes that device 
and it's as simple as that. This is a very fast process and within minutes you can have all of these programmed and a fully functioning security system. And with all your points covered in the occasion of an event, you will be notified. You can expect a fair price, no contract, and no hidden fees. To learn more details on this, go to simplisafe.com slash DIY creators or click on the link down in the video description. All right guys, that's it for this one. If you like more information on this build, I have free plans coming in a day or two, so be sure to check the video description for that. In the meantime, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop those in the comment section. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed, and if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you get notified when I upload a video. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators, and I'll see you in the next one.